Hey, welcome back to another episode of Historic Headstones of Norfolk. We are consider we are continuing our Pride videos today. We are at the very sunny, very hot Elmwood Cemetery on the Sunday morning. Um, you can tell we're all we're all celebrating Pride. I got my Pride glasses. I need them. It's so bright out here. All right, so we're going to be talking about Irene Leach. She is one of the earliest people that we know that were part of you know LBG community here. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to place a flag at her stone in celebration and a remembrance. Whoops. These things are hard to find. You can find them at Michael's. <laughs> All right. We're going to be talking about Irene Leachy. She was born uh, around 1939, uh, 1839. Her parents encouraged education and creativity. She was self-taught and eventually became a tutor to the Carter family out in Westmore, uh, Westmoreland County. She returned home from the silver, when the Civil War broke out. Her family farm becomes a battleground, destroys the crops, all the buildings on the property, including the house. So in 1865, the family left their land and never to return. In late 1865, Irene's mother passed away. She was forced to raise three of her younger siblings. In 1868, she accepts a teaching position in Winchester, Virginia. Now, when we talk about Irene Leach, we also need to talk about Anna Annie Wood. She's buried in another part of the cemetery. They were lifelong partners from their youth all the way to death. They met at the Valley Female Seminary in Winchester, Virginia in 1868, where they met in the seminary's main campus building known as Angora. Angorna, well, that's such a crazy word. After this, meeting, their, uh, after this meeting, their lives would stay intertwined for the next three decades. They were found as companions, roommates, business partners, education, world travelers, and life partners. In her book, The Story of a Friendship, Anna refers to Irene as the rare woman whose influence was there forward to dominate my life and develop any character at all that would possess a significance. Irene became a mentor and tutor to Annie. Irene influenced and guided Wood's insights for the rest of her life. When they decided to open their own seminary in 1871, Leach and Wood left uh, Angrona to spread their love of learning in Norfolk, Virginia. The Leachy Wood Seminary opened its doors in the fall of 1871 with full enrollment. However, smallpox struck the school two months later and temporarily shut down. After reopening, the seminary moved several times before settling on a building at 138 Granby Street. When enrollment increased, an ominous donor purchased a lot behind the building and built a 30 room addition to the school. The Leach Wood School raised the bar for school's edu uh, girls' education and held the highest standard for their tests. Even writing the University of Virginia for a copy of a math test to confirm their own testing standards. In 1880, they started a kindergarten program for children 3 to 8, a new concept of education at the time, and they are one of the first people to start kindergarten. They also built a large playground for physical education for, of their female body students at the time. Until the 20th century, the medical and physical education was unbecoming of women because of their delicate frame. We all know that's nonsense. They're, you know, women are equal to men. They should have full right to play in a playground just like boys do. In 1868, they formed the Fireside, the Fireside Club, composed a comprising of men and women. The purpose of holding weekly uh, conversations and reading. Uh, groups such as this provided women with a much needed bridge between domesticated and the worldly conversations. They were pretty much talking about math, English, history, you know, things like that. In 1891, Irene's health began to fail. That year, the pair set off for Europe, hoping the trip would heal Irene. In 1900, Irene kept getting worse while they were in Europe. They both returned to Norfolk, where on December 2nd, 1900, Irene dies from lung cancer or TB. Now, the story does not end here. We are going to go to Annie's, uh, Annie's grave next. Um, this is going to be a two-part video. And uh, these guys are groundbreaking in almost everything they do. They are just pioneers, kindergarten, women's school. Even their lifestyle was very pioneering back then. All right, guys. I'll see you at the next stone for this video. And happy pride. Take care. Hey guys, we are now at Annie's uh, Woods uh, headstone now, and like we did just with her partner, we are going to put a flag on the stone. Just gonna set that there, put that down, 
And this is a tradition we're going to be doing every year, putting a flag on their stones. All right, Annie Wood. Heartbroken but determined, Wood founded the Irene Leachy Library to preserve the memory and mission of her friend of 32 years and to provide lectures, concerts, and preserve works of art and rare books. The long-term goal was to collect works of art and to display and preserve them. She believed art would take hold in Norfolk once introduced, and she was right. The current popularity in Norfolk's art scene is a testament to her vision. In 1911, she increased the size of the library board to include members of the Leachy Wood Alumni Association, which Wood established in 1905. She hoped that more members would increase the chances of raising enough money to establish a museum in Norfolk. In 1917, Irene Leach Art Association name was changed to Norfolk Society of Arts, which exists to simulate and further the interest of art in Norfolk. This society is still around today. That's how important this group was. The vision and pioneering efforts not only led to the creation of the Norfolk Museum of Art and Science, which is now the Chrysler Museum, but to the founding of the Norfolk Sympathy Orchestra, the Little Theater, and many other organizations. In 1921, Wood returned to Florence, Italy, where she remained for the rest of her life. However, Wood remained a driving force behind Norfolk's pursuit of art. Wood passed away in Florence in 1940, and her body was brought back here and buried in the family lot. Unfortunately, sadly, they should be buried together, but back then, this was highly frowned upon by the families, and it was so sad. You know, it's, uh, yeah. But these guys were really important in the history of Norfolk and the LGT community. All right, guys, take care and have a great day. Bye.